everyone, welcome to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. The film, Ready or Not, is a black horror comedy that follows a young bride as she joins her new husband's rich, eccentric family. But on her wedding day, she's forced into a fun family game that quickly turns lethal. Stars Samara Weaving, Mark O'Brien, Andy McDowell, directors Matt bertolini Olpin, Tyler Gillette, and executive producer Chad Valala are here today to talk about this amazing movie. But first, here's the trailer. I can't believe that in half an hour, I will be a part of the Ladomus Gaming Dynasty Empire. Uh, Dominion, we prefer Dominion. I honestly can't wait to be a part of your family. There's just one more thing, and then you are officially part of the family. At midnight, you have to play a game. Why? It's just something we do when someone new joins the family. A game. What? game hide and seek are we really gonna play that well the rules are simple you can hide anywhere we then try to find you so there's no way for me to win right I mean, stay hidden till dawn <laughs> no thank you good luck what the hell is this how old is this thing Jesus, you shot the maid. Does she look like she's wearing a giant white wedding dress? Emily? <gasps> Holy shit! I had to play along so that I can get you out. It's insane. They think they have to kill you before sunrise. Or something very bad will happen to the family. If we don't find her and perform the ritual, we're all dead. Found her. Crossbow. I forgot my gun. Why don't you just use mine? Mr. Lodomas, I just saw her running. Oh my god! Oh! 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 Your fucking family! You're just another sacrifice. Ah! Do you think this is a fucking game? Oh! Yes, I didn't see. Remember? You wanted to get married. Please put your hands together for Samara Weaving, Mark O'Brien, Andy McDowell, Matt Berlini Olpin, Tyler Gillette, and Chad Valala. Hi guys. Hello. Hey. How Hi. you doing? Good. Good. So I watched this movie yesterday and I, I had to watch it in the office with people around me because I was I'm really a scaredy cat. And I was so engrossed in this film the entire time, truly honestly, because it is scary and it has all the horror stuff you love. But it's so damn funny. And I think that is so hard to do. So congrats. I think people are really, really gonna connect to this film. Um, who wants to just kind of take the job of breaking down the plot a little more? We just saw the trailer, but Tyler. Why is there, why Tyler. Is there, Tyler. Tyler, go for it. They pointed you out. This is a comedy? <laughs> <laughs> um, this movie, uh, it follows a young woman who, who marries into this incredibly wealthy and very eccentric family. And she realizes on the night of her wedding that to be truly accepted into the family, she has to play a game. And um, she, uh, she chooses the, the one card you don't want to choose, hide and seek, which is the one game you can't win. Sounds so innocent. Yeah, so innocent. And she spends the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the, the night fighting to survive. Yeah. And I love this group because, you know, rich people are crazy. We all know that. And this really sort of magnifies what happens when rich people just get kind of bored sometimes, maybe. Um, so, so Matt, take me through where this script came from and, and why it was something that really drew you to the project. Um, it was written by Guy Busick and Ryan Christopher Murphy. And we got when it got sent to us, it was just it's exactly what you're saying. It had this great kind of social commentary, but it was so fun and so funny. And it had these perfectly drawn characters. Like, everybody is their own character. Everybody has their own moment, has their own arc. And to us, it was just like, oh my god, we cannot wait to try to get involved in this. Yeah. Yeah. And Samara, what was enticing for you? Because you're in a lot of scenes, and in a lot of scenes you are running or fighting or in this high state of anxiety. So that was attractive to you. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I've done a couple of these genre films, and this was the first uh, character that was the protagonist that I got to play and um, I wrote this script and I loved it and I spoke to Radio Silence about um, making sure that she was 
really tough and smart and, and strong uh, rather than being the damsel in distress, which is an easy way to go with this kind of character. So I was really drawn to um, that challenge of making her determined and mad and, you know, starting out very frightened and shocked but getting angry. I'm interested what your process is like every day going into these scenes because she is really kind of like <laughs> functioning at 11 all the time. Yeah. So what did you have to do to ramp up to that kind of state of anxiety? Oh, I have constant anxiety all the time. So <laughs> it came really naturally. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's a really on point answer. I do too. Yeah. Um, and you play her husband, Mark, and he... He's an interesting character, and I don't want to give too much away, but what do you think his motivations are, or how do you view him? Uh, I think he's the greatest hero in cinema history. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, that speaks for itself. No, I, I, I think it's an interesting character because he's basically just trying to have it. He's trying to have his cake and eat it, too. He's trying to have everything. He, wa he wants to be with her, and he wants to sort of please the family just so he can do this one last thing and then go. But at the same time, I, I don't think he ever thought that this situation would actually materialize. So, so it's kind of like his nightmare as well, while at the same time trying to save her and quell her yeah. fears at the same time. So it's, it was really interesting. I mean, it, it went in a lot of different directions. What were the conversations on set? Because uh, th what this movie does is it puts you in all these scenarios you, where you have to think, what would I do? So did you guys have those conversations a lot about these characters? Like, what would I do if I was in that situation? Or... We'll call it I mean. Well, when this specific thing did happen to me in real life, I uh, <laughs> responded pretty much the same. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's the whole job of acting, right? Like, you, you just, what would you do in this particular circumstance? Use your imagination on, on how you would handle that thing. And, and, you know, that's why you always respect the character you're playing because they have a motivation of why they would do something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, Andy, you play his mother. Correct. The mother of the groom. Yeah. who is an interesting mother-in-law, which maybe is a nice way to say that. Uh, do you think her intentions are good, though? You know, that was the interesting part for me, for the character, is that I felt that she had deep empathy. She had empathy um, for Grace. She loved Grace. She, she actually saw in some kind of perverted way, like, oh, this beautiful girl is going to take her place. Like, oh, yeah, she's acceptable. <laughs> and, um, and she, and plus, her son, she brought her son home. So she's so grateful for that. And it's unfortunate that this is, you know, what we have to do. But it's, it's you know, it's a necessity. It's what we have to do to pres preservation of our own lives. And I think there's a part of my son that truly loves his family. I'm sorry, I still think that. <laughs> I still think that. You I loved her, you loved her, but mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, I, yes, I It was fun playing that, you know, that mother knows and yeah. the, the understanding of my, my favorite child, yeah. so. You also, so go ahead. No, I was going to say, I mean, when, when Andy McDowell's playing your mother, you're just like, yeah, I'll do whatever you want. So, yes. <laughs> yes, you're exactly right. Andy, you also have uh, a lot of, I think, what, some of my favorite lines. It's like when moments are really heightened, you kind of come through with these comedic jabs that sort of, like, calm everything down. That was what was so amazing about the script. It was everyone. Everyone had great lines, and I did have a lot of really good lines. Yeah. They gave me some great stuff. There was really good material. Plus, on top of it, they allowed me to embellish my character in a way that made me feel more confident in it. Like, they let me say certain things like, holy dick, that was my <laughs> idea, which sounds so small, but it actually really worked. And for the character, yeah. it was just like so an, a weird thing for her to say. Right. Plus her relationship with her husband, I think you could kind of feel it. It just really worked. Yeah. And they let me do stuff like that. So, and then we improv some, we can't say bad words on here, oh, can we? can. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, buckle like, up, everybody. Oh yeah, pass away. <laughs> In that yeah. case, I love that you said, holy dick, and it was so small. But right. holy dick. <laughs> In that but the case. thing of it is, is my dad used to say holy dick, but I never really, he was, you had to know my father. He was extremely proper. Yeah. So it was such a weird thing for him to say. That's why I loved it, because I just thought it was perfect for her. But anyway, there was this thing where we're trying to figure out what to do with the lanterns, because, you know, we're dealing with the lanterns and figuring it out as we're shooting it, and I just said it. They just said, I said, I'll take care of it, and I just said, give me the fucking lanterns. <laughs> you know, but it was funny. <laughs> Yeah. It was funny, and then everybody laughed. I was like, yeah, okay, that worked. <laughs> yeah. And Chad, take Excuse me. Excuse my language. No, don't, please. <laughs> 
Uh, Chad, take me through how important it is to balance that comedy with the horror and how you guys sort of were able to figure that out. I, I mean, I think tone is very important to yeah. something like this. Like, you, you want to live in the tension of the moment um, when you're doing something, because then you don't know if it's going to end in either a scare or a laugh. And just, like, really grinding that out and through these incredibly well-grounded performances from these three and the rest of the cast, we, we were able to, like, teeter that line a little bit. Like, are, are we going to laugh next? Are we going to are we, are we get a splat? You know, so you don't, never know what's coming next. Yeah, and for people who are afraid of scary movies, that is so welcoming. Because there's, like, moments where you're like, I don't know if I can deal with this anymore. And then they make you laugh. And it's almost like you get a reset, which right. is so important in a movie like this. Yeah, no, it's, it's fun. You need that type of release yeah. uh, um, throughout the, the course of the movie. And, and that's very, like, you know, true to life as well. Like, you need to laugh during, when things are very, very difficult and very hard, and you're going through, like, a crazy situation, sometimes you just got to be like, what the fuck is going on right now, you know, and, like, have a, have a laugh at it. Yeah. So, Mark, can we talk about the ro wardrobe a little bit? I feel like so many people are going to go dress as Grace for Halloween. Oh, please do. That right. would make my day. <laughs> so did she, did that wardrobe help you get into character? Because it is a real, it's almost like a different, it's like another character in the movie, the way she utilizes Yeah, it's dress. a weapon. It can kill people and you know she slashes it to in order to run uh it's actually a skirt and a top oh. which is cool the the wardrobe department did an amazing job and there was i think 17 17 dresses oh, wow. yeah and it was cool seeing them in the rack in the wardrobe truck because you could see the movie in the dresses it was awesome yeah, the different stages of yeah that, disarray that white dress <laughs> yeah. is not very white it's not white by the end yeah no. <laughs> uh let's talk about the setting because this home is beautiful. So this was shot in Canada, right? Yeah. Right. What is this home? Is it an estate? It's beautiful. It's uh, it's actually three three locations. Okay. Uh, Casa Loma, which is this huge mansion in downtown Toronto, and then the Parkwood Estate, which is uh, forty minutes outside of the city. It's and where they shot, shot Billy, Billy Madison. Madison. Billy Madison. Billy Madison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every, time, uh, every time. And they're actually both both of those locations are actually historic. They're they're museums essentially. They're heritage sites. So. They were filled, they had a little bit of the weird production design that you see in the movie was actually a part of what existed in these locations. And then the third location was um, was also in Oshawa, but was, we just used it as, as a single room. And we had an incredible, incredible, you know, group of, of department heads who merged all three houses to make it look yeah. like like one. And the house is really a character mm -hmm. in, the, in the film. Not only is it this sort of cage that she's trapped in, but um, it's... Uh, it's kind of bizarre, and it feels sort of like a labyrinth. The house is sort of a game in and of itself. I was going to say, it feels like a labyrinth. What were some of the unique challenges of shooting in a space like that and, and keeping it? I always felt oriented, you know what I mean? I've always felt like I knew where I was, and that seems like that would be a challenge. I mean, we planned out, we planned out pretty specifically the geography of, of the layout of the two houses. We actually had the blueprints printed up, and we kind of put them on top of each other and made sure that there was continuity and the way the characters are moving through the space. But as the movie goes on and, and Grace is more lost and confused in this situation, we kind of abandoned the idea of the logic of the house, and it, it sort of takes on this strange, almost nightmare, you know, dream language quality where you're it feels like you're in the same hallway, but you're not really sure. And it's always so really fun to kind of p play with the evolution of what you understand the geography to be. Yeah. Did you guys have a favorite day on set? It seems like a lot of these scenes were fun. There's so much humor and stuff, but do you have a specific scene or day that you'll always really remember? A lot of them, but I guess the my favorite scene was the one scene that every character is in. Yeah. It's when you really meet the family and Grace is introduced to all these zany characters. Uh, I'm sure it was really tough for the 80s to keep us wrangled together. When Henry explains the game? like No, what? before that. Um, and Music Stevens, room. everyone's there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was really fun. And, and we couldn't keep we it couldn't, straight We couldn't. We just laughed through. <laughs> There's one, one take, that one scene, like one camera set up that we did about like two, 15 takes. We were just laughing so much because we were all together. And I don't know how you guys dealt with us, really. In, in hindsight, it was just... Yeah, we all really children. got along. The, it was yeah. the best time, yeah. I, think I like the scene where we spit the blood. Oh, yeah. But you were tied <laughs> down. I was tied down, yeah. 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 She said, that spoiler. was bad. I felt really bad for you. And they were tying you pretty hard, too. <laughs> She's like, oh, it had to be around. The legs just laying there, tied down, 
while we were spitting blood. Cool. I was involved. I could like see you from the table. It's great. Does that get you guys excited to watch this when she's like, yeah, when you were tied down and we were spitting blood. It's like, what? What was the bloodiest day on set? I can kind of imagine. The, it was a, it's the last, the la the end that of the last movie. Scene? That yeah. last scene is amazing. I cannot wait for people to see this last scene. It is simultaneously terrifying and hilarious. I don't know how you balance that out. What were your reactions when you saw what was the final the final product? I just thought the timing was <laughs> so perfect. That's all I can say without giving it away. It's very funny. It's very funny yeah. and shocking, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then just on a personal note, do you guys like games? Do you guys have like family game nights and has that changed how you approach them at all? <laughs> yeah, now we uh, drink blood and tie people down. <laughs> There was yep. a lot of innocence, actually, on set. They played until uh, in smart word games, like kind of nerdy yeah, we word, <laughs> word games. And But the rest of us, because we worked all night. You know, you know I didn't work as some, poor Samara had to work so hard. But um, we just sat around. We played games all the time, sitting around and yeah. talk and kind of yeah. messed around. and. Yeah, we're never not joking. It, it was a really, it's rare to have this kind of a group together because there's sometimes at least one egg that doesn't really fit in or something like that. But it was just like really wonderful and sweet. And, and I mean, this is why you I want- You get weird at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, and it's nice when other people are weird with you. Yeah, and we're all weird. Yeah. It's like we were all stoned, but we were sober. Yeah. Isn't that the best way to be? <laughs> I know, it's best great. Feeling. It's great. great. I'm just, just say... regular stoned right now. <laughs> I was gonna say, can you make that the tagline of the movie? We were all stoned, <laughs> but we were time. sober. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, before we get out of here, we do have a couple of questions from the audience. Uh, who do we have first? Right there. Hi, everybody. Hello. Uh, I saw the movie yesterday, and I just wanted to say congratulations. You guys created something truly unique and entertaining, and thank you for the movie. Um, Samara, I have, my question is for you. Uh -huh. um, you've mentioned it already. You're very familiar with the genre. You've played now protagonist and antagonist crazy <laughs> person. And I was wondering if you have a preference. Do you like being the good guy or the bad guy? Both, I think. If it's a good script and a uh, you know, great people to work with. I mean, it's always fun to play an evil, crazy psycho, but um, I really enjoyed playing Grace too, so I don't have a preference. Yeah. yeah. Did, you, did you enjoy the physicality of the role as well? Yeah, it was great fun. Yeah. yeah. W was there like a, a hard scene or a stunt or something that you just were really looking forward to? Um, on day two, I was uh, fighting Andy McDowell, so that was pretty fun. <laughs> that was on day two. Yeah, it was day two. It was like, hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> I was choking her in, in between every take because I throw her up against the wall and have to choke her. Yeah. And you want it to look real, so you can't, you know, you, you can't, like, be flimsy about it. Yeah. But I didn't find out till yesterday that I was actually kind of joking her. Oh, it was fine. But she was sick. I'm she not kept complaining. telling me she was okay. I was like, are you okay? I was fine. Are you okay? I'm good. She kept telling me to keep doing it. So. Yeah. And then they started recording. So. <laughs> I was going to say, you should put that on your IMDb. Like, oh, yeah. Special skills, like should. choked out by Annie McDowell. Yeah. I don't know. I would. And one more. Hey, guys. Hey. I was wondering, if you find yourself in this situation where you had to fight for your life like that, what weapon would you choose to Ooh. fight for your life with? We're going to take this one by one. I want everybody to answer this one. Who wants to start? Um, I say, but this is if I had to get away with it, I'd say the ice pick, because then it melts and you can't find the weapon. Ah, oh, clever. <laughs> That's well thought dark. Out. Well thought yeah. out. <laughs> That's dark. Appropriately sociopathic. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that could be incriminating down the line if anybody... Yes. <laughs> well, she did say ice she pick. She said it. This one she warned us. It was a puddle on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, uh, rocket launcher. Let's go rocket launcher. Yeah. We didn't have a rocket launcher, did we? No. Was there a rocket launcher? Did I have no. to pick something from the no, movie? No, you could yeah. just in general. Go big. Okay. I was going to say something that would really work, but I don't want to say it it's because okay. it's something that we should get rid of completely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, but okay. I mean, you know, they seem to be working. You know? <laughs> so Clear let's, let's get rid of those. Yeah. What you um, I thought the crossbow looked cool. <laughs> I'd try that. <laughs> Would you have to Google how to use it first? Absolutely. Though? No. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I'd, I'd go lightsaber. Oh. oh yeah. Yeah. Fantasy. Yeah. Wow. 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 Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Beat that, Tyler. I don't, don't want to go I, I changed my answer. I, yeah, we all changed our answer. We're all getting lightsabers now. Lightsaber's way better. Please. 
I think I do the battle axe. I just the way that Nikki is holding it on the poster, it's kind of a character in and of itself. I'm I'm all about that battle axe. She's terrifying in the movie as well with that axe. Oh, yeah. um, like I said, guys, this was such a fun ride. <laughs> and I can't wait for my friends to see it so we can talk about it and all this weird scenarios your characters get put in. Um, if you guys want to check it out, Ready or Not, it's in theaters now. Put your hands together for Samara, Mark, Andy, Matt, Tyler, and Chad. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. You got Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo-hoo-hoo.